This week on Mill Street, I visit with Paola Brezeno Gonzalez, who teaches us about the cooking of her hometown, Puerto Vallarta. We begin with a quick beef stew, carne en sayugo, an amazing banana custard pie from Yalapa, and then a Colima style shredded braised pork. Please stay tuned as we explore the cooking of Jalisco in Mexico. Funding for this series was provided by the following That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures. Paula Brezeno Gonzalez grew up in Puerto Vallarta with an amazing cuisine that is little known even in Los Angeles, where I recently stopped by to visit both her and Javier Cabral, an expert on the local taco scene. It's so interesting when you get recipes from people, there's a range of potential outcomes. The food was just, it was different, right? Yeah. It, it, not like something I had before, mm -hmm. and it was really good. Yeah. yeah, I often tell Javier that I feel like in the U.S., that, you know, food that we eat at home in Mexico, because people know street food in Mexico or like high end. Right. The, I feel like this middle class, like right. the food at home is the food that we don't see often here. You know, I love a great black mole, like mole negro is amazing, but you don't eat that every day. It's a lot to digest, you know, it's like, it's a, really a celebration dish. And, you know, I think people think that we eat mole every day and, you know, we really eat like guisados and like, you know, stews and braised, you know, meats. And, um, you know, for me, I'm from the coast, there's a lot of seafood guisados. So, you know, that's the food that I am really passionate about that, you know, I think it's approachable, but also very interesting. Well, maybe we should go cook yeah. some of the food you're okay. passionate about and I would <laughs> like to eat. <laughs> This is a dish you grew up with. It's your father's favorite uh, recipe. And it's one of those things that takes under an hour, but it's got beef, it's got beans, and it's just got great depth, which is hard to do quickly, right? It relies on beef broth, and uh, sometimes you know you can add some diced bacon, crispy bacon as a garnish, so just keep it simple with some cilantro and lime. And I think it just really transports you into a combo or pho and carne asada tacos when you're eating it. It's just so, so satisfying. So this is thinly sliced beef, quickly cooked, and then, and then what do you do? You know, you cook them lightly and you really want to release all of the juices. So, you know, Chris, I know you tell everyone not to crowd the pan, and I hear for this recipe you do need to crowd the pan to release all of that flavor and really that you're going to build on that base of those juices that were released and add the beef broth. And then the key ingredient here is tomatillo. Your broth will kind of look like half and half of beef broth and also salsa verde. So, you know, you have that nice tartness from the tomatillos and the slight bitterness that just goes really well with the flavors. And this cooks in like 30, 40 minutes, right? Something yeah, it's, like so, it's so fast. I mean, that's, that was lunch at home all the time, you know, with some like melted cheese on the side, you make your own quesadillas and um, you know, it's a great meal. Beef and its own juices. So one of the recipes uh, Paula taught me when I was out in Los Angeles is carne in su yugo, which is meat and its juices. And there's a couple things about this recipe I really love. It cooks pretty quickly, under an hour. And that's because the meat's cut into really small pieces. So we decided to use short rib versus other cuts. We like the flavor, it's very rich. It has a good amount of fat in it, which is nice. So we have the meat cut in nice small pieces. Uh, this is Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce and half a teaspoon of pepper. The salt in the soy sauce and the Worcestershire sauce is gonna act a little bit like a brine. Add some flavor and also help it retain its juices. We started with some tomatillos. We've cooked briefly or poached. They add a really great flavor. They use a lot of Mexican cooking in other places. And they're gonna be the basis, uh, really, for the sauce in which we cook the short ribs. So uh, we'll put them in the blender. Uh, 
Uh, the two other ingredients is a low-sodium beef broth goes in. Just a cup of that. And a little bit of coarsely chopped onion. Obviously, you don't have to chop it finely because the blender will do the work. Okay. So we're going to hold on that because we have one other ingredient and we'll start cooking the meat. So we'll start with just a tablespoon oil. The next thing we're going to do is cook the garlic for just a minute. So put that in. Okay, I'm going to put the meat in right away because I don't want that garlic to burn. So I'm going to let the meat just set for a minute or two so then it'll release from the bottom of the pan. And we'll cook this for, you know, five, six minutes just to get it nicely browned. So now I'm doing something uh, really odd. I'm taking two tablespoons of this meat and putting it into the blender. It thickens up the sauce nicely, adds some flavor. But one of the things is it's really hard to measure this using a tablespoon. So we'll just do it this way. Put that in the top. And we're going to hold the top down pretty hard because this is really full. Let it go for about a minute. OK. So now we're going to add this uh, tomatillo puree with the uh, stock and onions and a little bit of meat to the pot along with our other ingredients. So three cups of low-sodium beef broth go in. A couple bay leaves uh, and a chili as well. Stir. So we'll bring this up to a slow simmer uh, and we're going to cook this for 40 45 minutes. So it's been about 45 minutes. Instead of soaking beans overnight in salted water, we're using two cans of pinto beans. We'll let that simmer for uh, about 15 minutes, and we'll finish up. So this has been 15 minutes. Now, how easy was this, right? Short ribs, cooks in under an hour. You have the nice, bright flavor uh, of the tomatillos, which is great. And you can garnish it with lots of things, obviously lime, uh, onion, cilantro. And my favorite thing, uh, is salsa matcha. It's a chili sauce, uh, but also has nuts in it. And you essentially fry or saute the nuts and add them, which gives it this really sort of thick texture. It's just an incredibly deep, rich, complex salsa. It's my favorite salsa. So that's carne in Sayugo, uh, meat cooked in its own juices, thanks to Paula uh, Gonzalez uh, from Puerto Vallarta in Jalisco in Mexico. A really easy stew takes less than an hour with big, fresh flavors. One of the dishes you, you taught me is a banana pie, but it's nothing like what I think of as banana pie. It just happens to be easier and better. Well, this one is a portable banana pie, like a handheld banana pie, <laughs> you know, that you find in a beach town near Puerto Verde called Yelapa, and, you know, you buy it from the, the beach vendors that happen to sell pies. So this one has, like, so much banana flavor in the custard, and also there's a layer of fresh banana on the bottom, and, you know, there's a nice brulee at the top, and just so creamy, and, you know, I just love the crust that is, like, really rustic and shortbread -y. You know, this is not a, a flaky, delicate pie. This is the pie that you would like stab with a fork and do you know, yeah. scrape your plate with. So it's delicious. So you, you pre-bake a crust, cover it with sliced bananas with a blender custard with more banana and sweetened condensed milk, yeah. which is the dessert sweetener of choice. But it also has concentrated banana flavor. It's not all fluffy with whipped cream. It's, yeah. it's delicate, but it's, great banana flavor. We've done banana pie years ago. I think we actually made a banana pie, that fluffy thing. But I was in LA not too long ago with Paola Brezeno Gonzalez, who is from Puerto Vallarta, had just these amazing recipes, things I'd never seen before, and one of them was banana pie. So I'm going like, we'll get the whipped cream and the heavy yeah. cream. No, it was a totally different thing. In fact, I think, you know, really much better. Because mm -hmm. it's really about the bananas, it's not about fluff. And not only that, it's extremely easy to make. 
For some people, the hardest part about a pie is the crust, and you're gonna see that we're about to make probably one of the easiest pie crusts. So. Without a food processor? No food, no, very little equipment. We have a quarter cup of water, and if you could go ahead and put that in the pan for me, Chris, that would be great. Okay. And then we're gonna add four tablespoons of salted butter and a quarter cup of vegetable shortening. Okay. And then we're just gonna heat this all together on medium-high heat. And the idea is we wanna just bring it to a simmer while melting the two fats together at the same time. While you're monitoring that, here we have a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, and I'm just gonna to add to that a quarter of a teaspoon of table salt. Just gonna give that a little whisk to incorporate it. And then I'm just gonna make a little well in the center. So we can go ahead and add that to our flour mixture. Right in the well, perfect. Now you wanna work quickly here. You wanna go ahead and stir that all together. And because that liquid was hot, the flour is gonna clump up pretty quickly. And you just wanna make sure there's no dry bits of flour. All right, so I'm just gonna scooch this off to the side. And I'm gonna lay out a piece of plastic wrap. You want one that's at least 12 inches by 12 inches. And then I'm gonna transfer this right in the center. It's a little bit warm, so you wanna be careful, but I'm just gonna pat it out into sort of a circle of shape, just make rolling out a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna put another piece on top. We are gonna roll it out to a 12 inch circle. You don't wanna roll it much thinner than like a quarter inch. And it's great when it's on the plastic because you can move it around, peel off the top layer here. And then I like to just grab it by um, two of the corners and then I just sort of flip it over. Again, if it's not perfect, it's okay because we can. You always say that and then it is perfect. <laughs> so I know, this is, is not quite perfect. I got some, some hanging over the edge, but you can just trim some from this side and add it over onto this side. And then I just wanna make sure there's no air bubbles underneath. And then I'm just creating a little bit of an edge here. And then once that's done, give it a little bit of a flute, fluted edge here. It's a little sticky, so I try to work quickly and not really have my fingers on the dough too long. So now I'm just gonna line this with a large piece of aluminum foil. Again, trying to be really gentle to not smush down those edges. And then I'm going to line it with pie weights. This is about two cups of pie weights. And now we are ready to go into an oven that I've preheated to 375 degrees with the rack set in the middle position. It's gonna bake for 20 minutes just until it's set. Then we're gonna remove the foil and the weights. And then if it's bubbled up at all, we're just gonna prick out those little bubbles of the fork and then put it back in the oven for another 12 to 15 minutes till it's like a nice light golden brown. Okay, Chris, so here we have our beautiful pie crust. So we can go ahead and start making our delicious banana custard filling. So we're gonna start with about a pound of bananas. It's about three medium bananas. I'm just gonna go ahead and peel them. And if you wouldn't mind, we're gonna place a few of these in the bottom of the pie crust. Now we're going into a second layer here? We are not, and actually that's what's really cool about this recipe, a lot of banana custard pie recipes will just have the bananas added sliced like this, mm -hmm. but we actually decided to take it up to another level and we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of these bananas straight into this blender and add them to the filling. Oh. This is one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. You know, I've grown to love that as an it, ingredient in baking. Say, it's one of the, yeah. I think I always associated it as being sort of an old fashioned ingredient, but it is wonderful. We're gonna add a quarter cup of regular whole milk. This is two large eggs plus a yolk. Teaspoon of vanilla extract. Quarter teaspoon of table salt. Whip it up in the blender. We're gonna let it go for about 15 to 30 seconds just till it's all smooth. It's done. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this over the bananas. It's okay if some of the bananas float up to the surface. And you wanna make sure you don't overfill. Sometimes you might have a little bit of filling left over. I think I'm gonna stop right there. 
Okay. So when I do this, I, it's always this tense moment, like how far can I fill I know, it? you want to keep pushing it further, yeah, I but push. I really don't want it to spill over in the oven. And when it does bake, it is going to poof up a little bit. So it's ready to go. We're going to put it into a 325 degree oven and it's going to bake for about an hour. And you're going to know it's done when it's all poofed up and light golden brown on the edges and it's just going to barely jiggle in the center. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, are you excited? You're getting excited. <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking like, how big a piece can I have, and it, it doesn't look. I'm just gonna, here. I'm gonna give you the whole pie. <laughs> no, I don't want the whole pie, but I want a I want a big one. So okay. this has been cooling now completely to room temperature about two hours, and now we're gonna do the best. What I think is the best part. We're gonna add sort of like a thin caramelized sugar layer, like a creme brulee. So this is three tablespoons of granulated sugar. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on top. If you wanna make sure you do it right before you serve it. And you wanna make sure that the sugar is in a fairly even layer so that it'll melt evenly. I'm just gonna sprinkle this last bit. All right. So do you have any tips for people who haven't done this before, who are a little concerned about setting themselves on fire? <laughs> well, always, or their pie always fire? point it away from yourself. That's the number one tip. No, I think that I'm, and you can see I'm working at a pretty low heat level, and I find it gives me a little bit more control. I mean, even though it's taking a little bit longer, you just want to concentrate on melting the sugar first before it starts caramelizing. And why is that? Parts of it will totally caramelize, and there'll be parts underneath that are still raw. I'm going to call that done. So mm. that's it, and we're ready to slice in. Yeah. Yep. All right, that could be my piece. Okay. It is a very flaky crust. There you go. Mm. And I believe we also have some whipped cream over there. That's beautiful. Ooh. Oh, that looks great. This is going to be so good. It I smells just great. Mm. Mm. There's so much banana flavor in this pie. Every year at Milk Street, I have a moment. <laughs> maybe, maybe more than one, but this is my moment here right now. And somehow it's not too sweet. It's mm. just intensely flavored. And the crust is, you know, it's it's flaky. Well, you're right. You would need a fairly structured crust here because mm -hmm. you would get soggy and right. wouldn't hold up very well. So thanks to Paola uh, in LA, this is uh, a grown-up banana cream pie from Yalapa, which is south of Puerto Vallarta on the Mexican coast. We don't have the water. We're not, we're not at the beach, <laughs> but we do have the pie. And this is absolutely terrific. So I'm gonna do a shredded pork, but it's nothing like my shredded pork. Well, this is tatamado de Colima, and you know, the really the star ingredient here is vinegar. In Colima, being the biggest producer of coconuts in Mexico, you find all kinds of really great products made with coconut, and one of them is coconut vinegar, and this is actually added to the pork. There's really like really beautiful brightness that comes through, and then I add some coconut milk just to round it all up, and I think it adds just really nutty richness to the dish. So this is a, like a pork shoulder that goes in the oven for four hours. Mm -hmm. And then you can finish it with a quick broil just to crisp up the bits of the top if you like, right? Yeah, and a pile of really nice hot tortillas, maybe some rice, you have a great dinner. And very little work. Yeah. You know, for me, it's really like the flavors of home, you know, with the coconut and the high acid. Mm -hmm. I feel like it really encapsulates what the type of cooking that you see in the coast of Mexico, which I feel like the biggest ambassador for the coastal cuisine of Mexico. And um, I think this is a good example of mm. that, you know? Thank you, Paolo. This is outstanding. So glad you enjoyed, Chris. Yeah. So today we are going to be making a tatimado de Colima, which is a shredded and braised pork with tons of flavor. I've got guajillo chilies here, and I have stemmed and seeded them. But to use them, I'm going to need to soak them. And once they soak up nicely, I'm going to use them in my marinade. I'm going to pull them off the heat and cool them so I can actually handle them. In the meantime, let's get our pork ready. So we've got our guajillo chilies done. I'm going to take this big piece of pork and score it so we can make sure that the flavors get through. I've got about a six or seven pound pork butt here. Bone in, we want all of that flavor. And I'm gonna start off by doing some little cross hatches on the fat side. About an inch apart, but you want just enough that the fat's got a little bit of broken up texture over here. And then 
we're ready to start our marinade. So I've got my scored pork butt in my pot. I'm using an enamel Dutch oven, and it's pretty important because we have a lot of vinegar, we have a lot of acid, and as that cooks, it can result in a super tinny off kind of flavor for this pork, and you don't want that. So now that my chilies have cooled down enough to handle, I'm going to put them into my blender to get them blended up for our marinade. We are going to add some seasonings. We've got some sugar, some cumin, some coriander, bay leaves, a good bit of salt, and some freshly cracked pepper. I have some garlic cloves, some minced ginger, a little bit of tomato paste, and then we've got the coconut factor. So we've got some coconut milk here. I'm gonna pour this in. And if you can't find coconut vinegar for this recipe, don't worry, I couldn't either. I'm using some unseasoned rice vinegar in its place. All right, I think we've got everything in there. Ready to buzz it. And we are going to pour this over our pork. All right, got every last bit of that goodness in there. My oven's been preheating at 325 degrees, and I'm gonna let this guy cook for about five hours or so until it's fork tender and ready to go. All right, this guy's been cooking for about five hours now. I'm going to heat up my broiler just so we can get a little color on the top and should be done in just a few minutes. So after a few minutes in the broiler, we've got some excellent color on top of our pork. I went ahead and took it out of the Dutch oven so I can work on my braising liquid. And so I'm gonna use my spoon here and just pull some of the fat off of the top layer. Now I don't wanna pull all of this off because fat is flavor. So I will leave it just a bit and get this heated up so that when my shredded pork is ready, it goes straight into warm braising liquid. All right. And while this heats back up, I am going to shred my pork. And all I'm gonna do is just pull it apart and pull it off the bone. Ooh, look at that, that looks good. So I'm adding this back to my about two and a half cups of braising liquid. If you have more than four cups, you wanna make sure it reduces down. But as I add this, I pulled out the bone, some of the extra fat, but I still want all of the flavor. There we go. Give it a stir. So I'm gonna let this cook in the braising liquid for about five to eight minutes. And when we come back, it'll be ready to eat. That looks really good. It smells good, it looks good. So I'm going to serve up some of my rice and beans. Get my pork out of the pot right onto my plate. Add a little bit of chopped up onions and some lime juice for just a bit of tang. Now we're ready to go. To make this recipe and all the recipes that you've seen today, head over to MilkStreetTV.com and you'll be as happy as I am. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad for all your kitchen adventures.
Hey everybody, Christopher Kimball here at Milk Street and thanks for watching us on YouTube. By the way, please subscribe to our channel and also click the bell for updates uh, as we roll out new shows. By the way, all the recipes from our current TV season are available for free at our website, which is 177milkstreet.com. That's 177milkstreet.com. Thanks and enjoy our shows.